everybody, welcome back to our tutorials. In this section, we're going to learn about Visual Studio and how to install it and configure it uh, for Ruby on Rails um, environment development, development environment. Uh, so what we're going to start is we're going to go to uh, code.visualstudio.com and don't confuse that with uh, visualstudio.com. Just make sure you go to code.visualstudio.com or just type in VS Code, um, like type open like this and go to VS Code like this and hit enter and you'll see in Google the first uh, search result, that's what it is. So over here, you're gonna download, I'm gonna download for the Mac, but you're welcome to download other operating systems like a, like Windows or Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and download for the Mac and uh, <clears throat> once it starts downloading, I'm gonna unzip it and it's gonna verify, and it's gonna open and then I'm gonna drag it over to the applications folder once it uh, un unzips and verifies itself. Um, Visual Studio is basically a, a text editor. It's one of the best text editors out there uh, as of today's uh, June 16th, 2020. And um, it's it's one of those text editors that basically make your life 10, ten times easier than if you didn't use it. Uh, it has auto-completion, you can debug, you can uh, do all sorts of things. Um, and obviously it's, it's, it's like, I can't even name, I can't even get started in, uh, you're gonna open that, uh, show in, uh, right click and show in Finder and double click on it. Yeah, so I can't even get started on how many benefits it has. All I'm saying is if you want to work with Ruby on Rails, uh, get Visual Studio, but you're welcome to use other text editors like Atom. Atom is great also. So um, once uh, this happens, you open a new Finder window and you just set the screens uh, side by side like this. And I'm going to just click on applications here and I'm going to grab my Visual Studio code and I'm going to drag it over to applications. Okay, to the applications folder. So I'm gonna take this uh, zip file and I'm gonna drag it over to the trash can because I don't like to hoard. And I'm going to basically, you can do it uh, in many ways. You can just now type in VS code and you know you can just select it here from the dropdown. So once it opens, guys, there's two plugins I want you to install. They're actually, they can be called extensions as well. Extensions or plugins. Um, and they're going to help us with uh, the Ruby syntax, and it's going to help us with developing um, Rails applications uh, as well. And you're welcome to look at other uh, ex extensions in the market, but I suggest for now we can get started just with those two. That's all we need. I'm going to make this screen uh, a little bit bigger. And uh, guys, I'm really excited to show you now how to uh, configure this um, and get it uh, over with. Now, this is the welcome page. You can just go ahead and close it. Uh, on the left side, you're going to see a bunch of icons, but you can click on the bottom icon and that icon will open up um, the marketplace. And over here, I want you to type in Ruby. And once you type in Ruby, uh, you're going to get like a bunch of other <clears throat> extensions, but you just install the one that has uh, a lot of uh, downloads. It's uh, for now it's 2 point, uh, sorry, point 27. So you're going to click on that and click install. It's got, I think over a million, one point, uh, one and a quarter million. Um, so next one you want to install is Ruby, uh, simple Ruby, which is right here, but you, you know, you just, uh, maybe you don't have to see what I'm seeing. So just type in simple Ruby and then, uh, select simple Ruby, this one here. Okay. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click install as well. So it provides a lot of, um, a lot of flexibility in regards like here, you know, you're adding a comment, but, um, inside uh, you know uh, an erb file a dot html dot erb file which which is a view for ruby so basically erb means uh, embedded ruby and you know the dot html dot erb files in the views of a ruby on rails application is basically seen by that by the browser it's it's literally an html file but you're allowed and you can put Ruby. Now this extension doesn't do that, obviously. It's not, that's not the purpose of the extension. The purpose of this extension is that you can um, do all kinds of sort of um, things uh, inside uh, an ERB file, okay? But naturally, of course, with the Rails framework, you don't need to have simple Ruby at all. But it's just uh, making our development uh, process a lot, a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the extensions here. Uh, I'm gonna just click again and it's gonna close. Next thing I want you guys to do is I want you to be familiar with Emet. Emet, back in the day, we used to have to install it. It's an auto completion and a beautiful flow process of you know, um, basically shortcuts that gets a lot of HTML um, beautifully put in with indentation without having to worry. Sort of like how poetry is. You know, it has a 
beautiful uh, indentation and it looks nice and neat and clean without having to worry. But now Visual Studio comes with Emmet, okay? So, but what we do need to do is we need to ensure that Emmet, um, which works with HTML, basically files that have a .html extension, we need to make that Emmet work also in .erb files, okay? So what we're gonna do, and I want you to remember this, okay? Uh, this is the view, and I want you to click on Command Palette. But you can also get there by simply, like if you click on View, you'll see here it says like, on a PC it would be different. Um, here it's Shift Command P. I believe in a PC it would be Shift Control P. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do Shift Command P. And I'm gonna open the settings file. I'm, no, I'm just gonna type in settings, like that. And you're gonna see a bunch of uh, results. And of course you, are, well I, okay, so you have the, the language specific settings, the default, the you the, the, the settings.json, and you have the settings UI and the user settings. Now the only one I want you to click on is the the settings, the what says settings, which is basically settings JSON file. Okay, not the default, not the users, just the settings JSON. Okay, click on that. Um <clears throat> and once you click on that, what you want to do is you want to make sure that Emmet is working with uh, the ERB files. That's that's really important, right? So what you can do is uh, you can, you'll see like an open close bracket. So this is just JSON format, um, curly brace, sorry, open and close curly brace. So if I come here in the middle, um, all you gotta do is it'll auto complete it for you probably. Uh, you type in Emmet, uh, include languages. So Emmet include languages and then I'm just gonna zoom in. Uh, hang on, okay, unable to write settings because because the file is dirty. I'm gonna save and retry. Okay, that's okay. Zoom level number one, that's fine. Okay, I I'm just uh, clicking in, I was doing command plus plus to zoom in. You probably didn't get that, okay? You didn't get that, uh, that prompt. And so basically you have, um, I'm just gonna zoom in again. So you have init.include languages with um, an open close uh, curly brace. So it's sort of like a hash, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna put now is I'm gonna put in with two columns. I'm gonna put sort of like a key and a, and a, and a value. In, in here, I'm gonna put ERB, and then the value is gonna be HTML. Okay, so this allows us to input like um, HTML inside ERB files, yeah. okay? So um, that's what I wanna do, because I want my life to be simple when I'm writing HTML in a view, and obviously that's what the view is for. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna click save right now. I'm gonna hold the command key and press S, okay, to save it. Command, hold command key and S to save, okay? Now I'm gonna just zoom out again. You don't have to zoom out, I'm just uh, zooming out. Uh, I'm gonna close the settings.json uh, file and now uh, you guys have um, are ready to go, but I do wanna let you know that you can, this Visual Studio can look a lot nicer. So if I was to open a new file, for instance, okay, and in this file, I'm gonna save it, okay? I'm gonna say file, uh, save as, um, and I'm gonna type in, I don't know, uh, I'm gonna save it inside desktop. And um, you don't have to do this right now, okay? You don't have to do this. I'm gonna call it uh, home.html, and I'm gonna click save. And like, for instance, I'm gonna, um, Code coloring, all right, semantic highlighting enabled. All right, so over here, I'm gonna type in something like H1, and that's what Emit does. Like, you see where it says Emit abbreviation? And if I click the tab key, it's gonna autocomplete, okay? So I'm gonna say hello, okay? And underneath it, or I'm just gonna like erase everything, like a div. Now, normally, traditionally, back in the day, or even if you're just a regular text editor, you can just open, um, open a division like this and type in div and then the class equals, you know, whatever, container, okay? And if you did that, you'd have to close it and even this autocomplete that you just saw, that's because of Emmet, right? And you would put like columns or whatnot. But with Emmet, you can go div, you know, dot uh, container. So instead of like doing, that's a shortcut and hit the tab key, bam. Now if I wanna put a column, I just put a div dot call I don't know, dash six, for instance, if that's the name of my class, and I hit a tab key, and bam, I got that. And look at the indentation. This is like basically two spaces. One, two, three, four. That's four spaces, sorry. And you can change the spaces, but I, you know, I'm gonna leave it at two. And to be honest, I actually like uh, two spaces, so I can always uh, change this here um, in the spaces. And so he says spaces four, I can change that into, um, 
in that using uh, indent using uh, tabs. Um, let's just try that, uh, and I can say the tab size I want it to be two. So oh, you know, if I go ahead and go div dot container, uh, and I hit the tab key there. So that's just like two spaces. So and, and I and I want it to be two spaces. And I think you should do the same too. I think four spaces is way too much. All right, like if I went like h1 and I said hello, um, and I and I hit the like, uh, and I said hello. And I went enter again, you know, that's, again, it's two spaces here. All right, so now you see the color of all this, right? All this HTML, it's nice, but we can also pick up a really beautiful theme. And you can go to Google and uh, what I did is I typed in like VS Code themes. And um, here, um, basically, uh, you have uh, Night Owl, you have IU, you have Winter is Coming, uh, Winter is Coming Light, Winter is Coming. You have shades of purple. Shades of purple is beautiful. I think it is. I just gonna copy that. Come over here, and you can click on the marketplace, and then paste it in, and hit enter, and then you'll see it there. Seven, uh, seven, seven, seven sixty-seven thousand installs. Um, and I'm just gonna click on that, and I'm gonna click on install. Okay, and look how beautiful this is. It's it's really beautiful. I think I think it's gorgeous. It's easy on the eyes. Um, and here it's giving me an option again. That's why it doesn't want to quit. And it says shades of purple or dark default dark. I'm just going to click sh shades of purple. Okay, it's, it's really nice. And I'm going to just close this now, the extensions, because it's already installed. And again, um, it's really nice. I, I love it. I love it. it it's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, so like, you know, so sort of like a, like a div, uh, da, uh, you know, number sign, that's to make a, an ID. Okay, if I put trigger and then I hit the tab key, you know, so you have like uh, put an anchor, you know, uh, so it's it's really nice. So that's all I wanted to show you guys. So on the next uh, part, we're gonna develop our first, uh, we're gonna generate our first uh, application with Rails. So we got everything complete now, everything is done, everything is awesome. I'm gonna click here to close this and uh, I'll see you guys on uh, the next tutorial. All right, I'll see you in the next section. Thanks again, like, like and subscribe, please. If you uh, like these tutorials, and I'll be more than happy to continue doing what I'm doing, all right? Because I wouldn't do this without you guys and without your support. So I wanna say thank you so much for supporting my channel. All right, have a wonderful day.